What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Lenovo ThinkPad T14S Gen 6. Now I'm a huge fan of these Lenovo ThinkPads. I love the design, hasn't changed much over the years. And personally, when it comes to the 14 inch design, this is one of my favorites on the market. But the big reason I wanted to get my hands on this is because this isn't using an AMD CPU. It's not using an Intel CPU. It's actually using a Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite. And when Qualcomm initially launched these CPUs, this was kind of the first thing that came to mind because of the battery life that we can get out of these new chips. I mean, it's absolutely amazing what these things can do and putting it in a ThinkPad design like this, I think makes a lot of sense. It's plain Jane. I know there's some people out there that don't like these, but they're definitely some of my favorites. It's an iconic laptop design and Lenovo hasn't done away with that track point yet right there in the middle of the keyboard. I love to see this. And when it comes to the keyboard itself, it is a backlit design. We've got a 14 inch 16 by 10 1200 P IPS display here, which definitely gets the job done. And I do want to give Micro Center a big shout out for sending this over because I wouldn't have been able to get my hands on it without them. And if you're not familiar with Micro Center, these are brick and mortar stores. You can also order online. I'll leave some links in the description. And right now at the time of making this video, they're running Cyber Week all week. It's not just Cyber Monday at Micro Center. They've got deals on thousands of products right now from gaming PCs, laptops, parts to build your own PC. You need a router, they've probably got a deal going on over there. PC Mag recently crowned Micro Center, the number one tech retailer in the US. And it's pretty awesome that they've still got brick and mortar stores and their new Santa Clara store is gonna be opening in spring 2025. So if you need deals on any kind of tech, I'll leave links to their official website in the description. But getting back to the ThinkPad, like I mentioned, this is using the Snapdragon X Elite, and this has the XE1 78100, so we've got 12 cores up to 3.4 gigahertz. They've also packed in 32 gigabytes of RAM, and this is running at 8,448 megahertz. A one terabyte 2242 M.2 SSD. We've got that 14 inch 1200p IPS display, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, a 58 watt hour battery, which might not sound like a lot if we were working with an x86 CPU, but this thing gets some crazy battery life. We'll take a look by the end. It's running Windows 11 Pro, and this thing only weighs 2.73 pounds. That was the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box. This thing is really light. I've been using this laptop for the past week and it really does make me miss the ThinkPad design. Super easy to use. We've got that track point right there, which does work out pretty decently. I don't use it, but it's cool to have it there. I'm just more into the trackpad here. It's a pretty compact design given that we've only got a 14 inch display, but they've managed to get a really nice keyboard fitted in this thing. Upward firing speakers over here on the side and the keyboard is backlit. It's just a single zone white LED, perfect for nighttime use. Trackpad feels great on this thing. And of course, you know, with something like this, we do have that co-pilot button. Some people are really into using co-pilot. I've used it a few times to generate some images of hamsters wearing armor, that's about it. But there's a lot more that you can do with co-pilot. It can help you summarize stories, it can help you summarize movies, help with writing essays, descriptions. And right here, Microsoft has updated this recently, just gives us some suggestions. So it's gonna summarize a movie for me. So we'll go with Bolt. Me and my son watched it again a couple days ago. It's gonna give us a rundown on what the movie's about and Copilot can come in handy for some people out there for certain use case scenarios. If you've been using Copilot for a certain task since it launched, let me know what it is in the comments below. But now I wanna move in just a bit closer. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at the operating system. A couple little things that I wanted to show off here. So getting right in here with Windows, it has been a little while since we've tested the Snapdragon X Elite, and since then I've noticed that a few other things are working now that weren't when these were first released, and I kind of suspected that would be the case. Uh, hardware info is working, but Rivatuner is not. It's still crashing games on me. I've tried everything to get that up and running. As you can see, we've got that X1 E78100, 12 cores, 12 threads, 32 gigs of LPDDR5X at 8,448 megahertz. It's got the Qualcomm Hexagon NPU and that Qualcomm Adreno X185 GPU. When it comes to everyday normal use on this system, I mean, it's really quick. I haven't had any issues with this thing and a lot of applications are just gonna work because we've got Microsoft's Prism Translation layer. Uh, one thing I did wanna test out were a few games here, so we will get into that in just a second. But the first thing I wanted to do was uh, take a look at some benchmarks that I ran on this. And I kind of wanted to face this off against another ARM-based platform out there. 
Apple, and we're going to be going with an M3 MacBook versus the T14S here. And the first benchmark is Geekbench 6. Taking a look at single core on the T14, 2,389. On the M3 MacBook, keep in mind that's the 8 core, 3,043. So in single core, that M3 is beating out this Snapdragon X Elite. But when we move over to multi, it does kind of swap a little bit. Mainly because we've got 12 cores and 12 threads here as opposed to the M3's 8 core CPU. I also ran Cinebench R24, single core on the T14, 111, M3 MacBook, 142, and when it comes to multi, these are really close. On the Snapdragon, 632, M3 MacBook, 669. Nice. And before we get into gaming, just wanted to give you a look here. Uh, Microsoft does have the automatic super resolution. So this works with these Qualcomm chips, and I'm not exactly sure how well it is working. Some games do benefit, some don't, but I'm going to leave it on here. And with that said, let's see if we can run some games on this machine. So we're starting out really light here with Hades 2, 1080 high settings. Up in the top left hand corner, I do have the built-in Microsoft metrics because like I mentioned, if I use Afterburner with something like Rivetuner, it will crash games out. But this game runs just fine and so do a lot of other indie games. I mean, we've got more than enough power here and with that translation layer for these easier to run games, it seems to do a pretty decent job. Even with something like OG Skyrim, 1080 high. And originally, I went into this game at low settings 900p because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. It ran so well, I backed out of it, went up to high, 1080, looking good here. I mean, we're getting a consistent 60 FPS on this Snapdragon chip. But when moving up to the newer AAA games, that's where you're going to find a few issues here and there. This is Spider-Man Remastered. We're at 1080 low. And I'll tell you, it's really odd because even if I take this down to 720, performance doesn't change all that much. But we do have some weird graphical issues going on in the background. As you can see from the water back there, it's all black. And I just think it comes down to compatibility with the Adreno GPU. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 720p low with no scaling except for the built-in Microsoft scaler. And we're getting an average of around 40 FPS. And don't get me wrong, this is not perfect, but it's still really impressive to see this ARM chip running an x86 game here with that translation layer. It's not running it super well, but it is able to get over that 30 FPS mark. So overall, I mean, we're seeing some good CPU performance. GPU drivers could definitely be improved. And if you wanted to use this for everyday tasks like web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, you want to do some photo editing on it, it's going to work great. But I think one of the main selling points here is battery life. And with this, even though we've only got a 58 watt hour battery, I tested this using the Passmark battery life test, 40% screen brightness, video playback, 22 hours and 53 minutes. And this uses local playback in this benchmark. But yeah, I mean, if you've got a work day ahead of you, you can get all day battery life out of this thing for sure. So who's this thing really for? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, if you're not going to be playing games on this machine, you're going to be able to get all of your work done with this thing. Awesome battery life. Personally, love the fact that it's so light and some of the older ThinkPads were pretty heavy given the components they needed to use, especially when it comes to the cooling system to keep those higher wattage chips down. It's some of the best battery life that we've seen out of a ThinkPad so far, and I do love this iconic design. I mean, these are workhorses, and with something like this, yeah, you could definitely get the job done. I'm going to be taking this with me for the next five days. I'm going on a trip, and this is going to be my only Windows machine, and while I'm gone, I still need to get work done. I really wanted to see if I could use only a Snapdragon X Elite for what I do, and I think it's possible here. Got some software that I want to install, but I will update you when I get back just to let you know what the experience was like. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the Lenovo T14S, I will leave links to Micro Center's website down below. Remember, they've got Cyber Week going on right now. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this in my next video, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.